But, like, there's just some people, like, there's certain people I just know. It's all, like, if zombies happen and we're by ourselves, I'm shooting this motherfucker so the rest of us don't have to deal with them. Welcome to a brand new episode of Laugh With Me, a podcast with Jeremy Odom. I'm your host again and again and again. Man, I got to tell you, just, uh, you know, everybody has that person, you know, somebody in their life that you send memes or uh, tweets or, you know, something funny, reels, TikToks, whatever, whatever it is that you are constantly, you know, scrolling through. You always have that one person that you send things that are funny to that person whether you think it's like a communal sense of humor where you both you know you're both gonna love it and you just have to share it or it's just something that you think that person's gonna love you know whatever it is you have that one person right i just got sent to me from my wife a picture of lebron james's foot have you seen this it it was posted uh february 6th at uh, 8.42 a.m. on Twitter. Daily Loud is the Twitter handle. Um, he was spotted at the beach. There's his foot. And it, it, the, the caption is, LeBron James currently has a picture of his feet going viral from all his years of playing professional basketball. I'm, I'm as big of a LeBron fan as there's ever been. Proof of this, I own Cleveland Cavaliers merch. I own Los Angeles Lakers merch. I own Miami Heat merch. I'm not tied to any NBA team. I've been always been more of like a, a fan of a player of an era. Allen Iverson at one point was my guy. Kobe has been my guy. LeBron has been my guy since he's been in the league. And I got to tell you, I didn't know about the foot. I really didn't. It's like somebody took his toes. You know, when your your feet just it's just sitting there, right? And then if you were to grab the toes, you know, from the outside, outside of both sides, the big and the, and the pinky toe, and you just kind of squunched them together, you know, you just kind of crumpled them up like a piece of paper. That's what his toes look like. But the rest of the foot's still a big-ass foot. But his toes are just crunched together. Like, I know his sneakers aren't that tight. Like, he's not wearing some tight-ass sneakers at the toe. That would hurt. He's a world-class athlete. Why are his toes like this? I don't know. Also, why did I need to know this about my favorite basketball player? Why is this picture going viral? Let let the man live. But now that we've seen it, gosh, come on, LeBron. <laughs> you got to get that looked at. Now, I'm not asking for him to take time off to get the, the toes fixed, but the fellow's going to need to get it fixed at some point, right? It's disgusting. And not in like a gross kind of way. Like I can, I can, I'm looking, I'm, trust me, I'm staring at this picture of his foot. But just, I don't know. He doesn't want to live like this, right? I mean, it's crazy. And he's at the beach. And you, I'm sure after he retires, he's going to be at the beach more often. Man, Bron, you've got to get that looked at. I hope it's not like that's not how his foot is. Like hopefully, maybe it was just the way he was standing. I don't know. It almost looks like he's standing normal. I need to see the other foot. This is just his right foot. I need to see the left. Man. It's not right. It's not right. I, you know, follow us on, uh, follow the show on Twitter at laughwithmepod, or you can follow me at J.O. from Nebraska. I'm going to be putting this out there for the people. If I had to see it, so do you. What is wrong, Bron? <laughs> Damn. All right, enough enough with the bronze foot. We, we've got a, a a fun show for you today. Um, Celia Contreras, you you may have heard of her. She's a stand-up comedian out of Austin, Texas. Uh, she's also been from the Phoenix, Arizona area. Uh, she's been featured on Kill Tony uh, a few times. Has opened for Roseanne Barr um, and a host of other big time stand up comics. We're going to be talking about it. We're going to dig into it and just kind of talk about her story. It's very interesting. And she's also promoting her brand new podcast that just came out this month. It's a once a month, top of the month uh, drop on YouTube called Surviving with Celia. And it's out uh, right now on 
YouTube. Birthday Boys, those are the fellows that put it out uh, with her. So if you can't find Surviving Celia as you search it, you can certainly find it by searching the Birthday Boys uh, YouTube page. But we've got a fun chat with Celia coming up. You can find her going through uh, Arizona here this weekend, February 7th. She is at the Tempe Improv in Tempe, Arizona. February 8th, Museum Club in Flagstaff, Arizona. February 9th, Chuckleheads in Bisbee, Arizona. And February 10th at Bull Shooters in Phoenix, Arizona. Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen her on the show Kill Tony. Before we get into the actual jokes, I just want to say if you're out there and have a disability, don't let it stop you from being the type of person you want to be. Thank you. My mom's colorblind and she's still racist as hell. I uh, got in trouble when I was a kid because I read a poster that said it's never too late to do the right thing. So I was inspired. I went home and tried to kill my sister with a coat hanger. I uh, don't trust people who go to wine tasting parties. Something about people who pay to spit out alcohol, it offends me as a Catholic and an alcoholic. (laughs) Especially if you're atheist, because if you can't swallow the blood of your enemies, what fucking good are you? (laughs) I asked you mother the question. (laughs) This is Celia Contreras on Laugh With Me. Well, the most important thing you need to know about my podcast is is I'm trying to raise a small army to steal the weather machine from the Jews. (laughs) I'm tired of the cold. Just kidding now. Um, So it has a big agenda is what you're saying. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Well, it's called Surviving with Celia, and I I watched it today um, on YouTube. Have you actually watched it? I did. I did. You know what? It, I wish I would have waited until about 2 a.m. and had like some drinks because it felt like I was hanging out with the boys and just like riffing, basically, just finding like where our brain goes. I had a lot of fun recording that episode, and this past Tuesday we recorded another episode, and it's like two different energies, <laughs> like both times, but I absolutely love doing both interviews. So the, the, the two guys that you had on there, um, is are they the birthday boys? So Eric, the white guy, he's a birthday boy, and then Scott's just some derelict I made friends with. Um, no, uh, Scott's a homie. Okay. Um, you, you guys seemed like good friends, and I just wasn't sure if they were the birthday boys, but um, it definitely you guys had like great chemistry together. Yeah. Um, Eric's one of them, the guy behind the camera, JP Boo. Um, he's the other birthday boy, and he also like runs this yoga channel. Okay. Um, for people. Like, he's really good at editing podcasts and setting them up, but he like does all the busy work that people like me are too dumb to do. Well, not, it's not even that. It's just it's like time. Like, how do you find time to have to edit and cut and produce and, and put it up anywhere? That is also true. But um, I loved working. Like, I did their podcast twice. I've been a guest on it. And JP was all like, okay. He's like, I'm just asking. You can tell me no. But uh, <laughs> have you ever thought about doing your own podcast? And I'm like, yeah, lots. No, originally, like, we were, like, spitballing. Because originally when I thought about doing a podcast, I didn't want it to be just, like, another comedy podcast. Because I want to talk to, like, real people, too. Yep. Um, <laughs> but also, I wanted it to be, like, positive. Like, originally it was going to be called Favorites. And I was going to interview people about shit that makes them geek out. Like, if you're really into stamps or if you love to work out. Oh, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, so maybe that'll come later. But uh, he's like, would you be down to, like, do, like, we'd produce it and we'd do the podcast. And we were talking about it on the way to recording their podcast, Birthday Boys. And then we were outside smoking a joint. And, um, or no, I think we talked about it on state. Or we were, like, spitballing while we were smoking. (laughs) And then I think, well, we were actually recording. It's like, what about surviving with Celia? Because we were trying to think of a catchy name, like the surviving part. Like you, you really got into what would you do if, um, you know, we had the apocalypse and there were zombies. Is that kind of like the basis? Like whoever's on the on the that episode is kind of like what would you do and how would you survive and that kind of stuff. Yeah, different subjects each time. Um, if like we get to it, the other part is like just asking people shit they had to survive in general. Like if they have any survival skills. Um. Thing. Yeah, stuff you've overcome. But like, there's a lot of ways to survive. 
Oh yeah. And I probably thought that was cool. And one one of the things yeah. that was brought up was like you'd have to de- at some point you're just dealing with the people that are that yeah. are left. And to me, that would be that's when things like <laughs> I would hit my breaking point a hundred percent. Like the power, the lights, the, the water would run out. Like all those things. Sure, you got to deal with it. But the, the the people, I mean, how annoying people would get, and you have nowhere else you could go. I, I do need to get more in shape if zombies happen, because, like, I may save a stray kid or two, like, in The Last of Us or whatever. <laughs> but, because I like kids, but then they're annoying as shit, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, there's just some people, like, there's certain people I just know, it's all, like, if zombies happen and we're by ourselves, I'm shooting this motherfucker so the rest of us don't have to deal with them. Yeah, it's no holds barred. It, there's no rules anymore. Well, I, I love the... the last pudding pop. <laughs> well, well, yeah, that's the thing. There's no more production. Like, anything that you love, there, there's got to be an end to it. And how do you yeah. stockpile that? And then how do you protect it? I mean, it would be it would be quite the deal uh, protecting all the last ding-dongs, you know, for me. <laughs> yeah. No, and then, like, I am an alcoholic, but um, I forgot who I was telling this to. It was one of my friends when I was talking about doing the podcast. And I'm like, alcohol keeps for a while, but, like, beer doesn't. <laughs> yeah. It's, and he's like, well, you'd run out of alcohol, so you'd be fucked. And I'm like, you think I don't know how to distill and ferment shit? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't, but I need to learn because that had me thinking. And I'm all like, well, it's like I don't want to be sober during the end of the world. <laughs> it would be, uh, it would be safe to. I don't guess it wouldn't be safe. People would try to break in and take over a liquor store, and that'd be the home base. But yeah. then, like, how depressing it would be as the supply started to wear down. Yeah. <laughs> so as long as like berries and shit are still growing, you can make toilet wine. Yeah, that's I true. Don't know. Well, I know I've seen you. I've followed you on uh, like fate on your socials, and you've said like, "Oh, X amount of days, you know, without a drink." And you just brought it up. You you know made comment. You're like, "Oh, I'm an alcoholic." Um, you said that was it seventy five days was the new goal. Like you had a pretty good goal that you were you were starting. It is seventy five, but like we're restarting the bet again on Monday. Okay. Because I lost track. Because he went home. He went to Vegas. <laughs> and he's like, can we put it on pause? Because I'm like, yeah, nobody wants to be sober in Vegas. That's why it's legal to drink there 24-7. Yeah, that's Vegas. That's that's the whole point. But, like, I lost track of days, so, like, I had a beer, and I'm like, wait, it's like, you're still in Vegas, right? And he's all like, no. <laughs> and then he was all like, well, yeah, actually. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. It's like, so I can still drink, and then we're just all like, let's just wait till next Monday. And then we're both like, yeah, we're pieces of shit. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> So seventy five days, and then like, so what's the bet? I guess I, I got that lost in in, uh, in the post. Like, what what happens at the end of the seventy five? All right. So technically, he already lost the bet. Like, he lost at twelve, and I was gonna keep going. I think I made it today eighteen or nineteen. I think it was eighteen. But um, he lost, so he has to get my name tattooed on his face. Oh wow. Yeah, and we're doing the bet again, and like, if he loses, he has to get the last name done too. That's a bet. Holy cow. I don't know if I'd drink for a year if that was the bet with somebody. That's fair, but also my homie's a tattoo artist and he already has face tattoos. Oh, so it's no big deal to him. <laughs> yeah, like not particularly like he doesn't want it to happen. We both had to pick something we really didn't want to happen. And like I picked getting my nipples pierced because like I know it's a weird stance for somebody who used to self-harm. Yeah. But I have white ass nipples and I don't want needles going through them. <laughs> I don't think that's a good reasonable. <laughs> oh, that's fun. But 75 but, days. You'll, you'll make it. I know you can make it. Yeah, I'll be fine. But like, I am going to take advantage. I probably am going to go out and drink tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Reminds me, I struck out with a girl yesterday. Did you? <laughs> kind of. Well, I didn't even know she was flirting. She comes up and she's like, twerk that ass for me. And I'm like, oh, I'm really bad at twerking. And then she's like, damn, you don't even fucking try. This is why I can't put my heart out there. It's just breaking your heart and you don't even know them. And then she stormed off. Wow. And I'm like, I didn't know she was hitting on me. And I'm like, I am so bad with women. It's like, I suck. I feel like you had a seventh date fight, like in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that happens to me a lot, though. Like when I used to actually date before I found out you can just fuck a guy and you don't have to take him on a date. <laughs> it's like, y'all slutty. <laughs> Once it happened once, you're like, this is a thing? Yeah. 
<laughs> that's great. Are so are you in the Austin area then? So is that like kind of your scene or are you cause I know you're from Arizona, but is that kind of where you're at now? Yes, I live right on Dirty Six. Like when I walk out of my house, I can see Mothership and uh, Vulcan Gas Company. Oh, you're right in the from mix. Where I'm then. standing. Yeah. Very nice. Because there's uh, apartments above the bars. So the, I mean, in the, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, so I'm far from Austin, Texas, and far from uh, that kind of scene, but kind of like, tell me, I guess, kind of what that scene's like and, and just kind of the energy of it. Um, I do like the Austin scene a lot, and I think it's like a good mix between like the two, the couple scenes I have seen. Um. It does, like, because of the whole Joe Rogan and Mothership and Kill Tony thing, it is, like, L.A. in the sense that anybody with a tank of gas and a dream just moves there. And he's like, I'm going to start comedy. And it's like, have you ever done it before? It's like, no, but Kill Tony's going to love me. <laughs> it's like, Joe Rogan's going to see me in a bar. No, I have it. <laughs> and it's like, it doesn't work that way, but okay. Somebody told me but, once I should be a comedian, so I'm going to Austin. It's like my friends think I'm funny. Like, shit like that. Yeah. But um, there are a lot of talented comics here, too, or, like, comics who've been doing it for a while because I had been doing it. I was at the seven-year mark when I decided to move over here, which was about seven, eight months ago. Right. And, uh, yeah, no, me and my friend Hector and our other friend, A.B. Reyna, we came to visit and sign up for Kill Tony and check out the other clubs and while we were there i like turned to hector and i'm like i think i have to move here <laughs> this and is my like, destiny yeah. but so, like other people were telling me to move to austin i'm like i don't want to do that it's a new place it's like what if they don't like me and i was like crying and stuff when i was moving I'm like what if the other comics don't like me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, like, do you find that you. that happens i mean do you find that it's kind of either if you make them laugh, they're they're buddies with you, or is it more competitive? I mean, what's that like? Um, so it was actually very welcoming because I went hitchhiking for a little while when I broke my finger in Arizona. So I checked out the Vegas scene, the Orange County scene, and the LA scene. But like all those scenes, I'm like only at the open micer level, of course. Yeah. And uh, L.A. open micers suck because half of them are actors. It's like, I don't really do comedy. I'm just trying to be an actor, and my agent told me to do this. And I was like, go kill yourself. Yeah. Um, but, like, Vegas was very welcoming, and so was Orange County, and Austin was really, like, I was freaking out. But I was there here for maybe, like, two days, and they're like, hey, we're having a barbecue next weekend near the Springs if you want to come. And I'm like, really so like my first week i get invited to a barbecue and i'm like hanging out with people and the week that i was here i was doing like i was just doing my tight five over and over again so people would like me yeah <laughs> and like now that everybody like all the regular open micers know who i am i'm just trying new shit again which is nice because they'll start to get bored with my set again and i'm like so what's your writing process like? I mean, are you, I know, I know you're, you you got to master the, the five and then kind of, you know, go from there. But like, do you try uh, new things often or are you just more like, let's kind of work and develop and tweak, you know, the, the current content that I have? Um, It's a little bit of everything. The biggest thing is you have to look at yourself in the mirror for at least an hour yelling, you're a fucking hack. Mm. Um, you know, uh. I just write every day, like, not to be funny. Like, I have a mood journal because I have bipolar disorder, and that kind of helps me keep track of that. Okay. But, like, just writing kind of gets you in the creative mode. And then sometimes I'll think of, like, a good one-liner, but this is, like, rarely. This will be, like, maybe once every couple months, or I'll have an idea for a joke, and then I have to rewrite it, like, 90 times. And I'm like, okay, this didn't land. Try it this way. Try it that way. And, like, sometimes you try something and then you think of something on stage and say it and it gets a laugh. It's like, okay, that's going in the joke or I'm going to do it this way. And I would imagine, and I don't know, so I've never been on the show, but I would imagine writing for Kill Tony far different than writing, you know, for, for five or six minutes or ten minutes. Oh, it really is because you only have one minute and you're, like, trying to get, like, as many laughs as you can or at least big or a big laugh. Versus, so, like, now that I'm trying to headline, now I have to, like, like I'm learning how to write story jokes because I'm not doing an hour and a half special or I'm not going to do 45 minutes of one-liners. That's fucking insane. It would wear me down. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> be laughing so hard it would wear me down. But not everybody's Anthony Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when you were writing, you know, the, the 60 seconds for kill Tony, I mean, how long did you have that in your, in your toolbox? And like, how many times were you, um, putting your name in the bucket? Um, so the month I spent in LA, I signed up every time, didn't get on. And then when kill Tony would go on a road, occasionally they came to Arizona three times. And the last time they were there it was about four years ago. And I got on. That everybody was telling me before I knew what Kill Tony was. It's like, you should do Kill Tony because you have one-liners. Because I do like one-liners, and I like to take the fat off my jokes and stuff. Because I can't take fat off in real life. <laughs> I could, it just sounds exhausting. Huh? It's, <laughs> that, that was funny. It was so much work Thank to you. you know to take it off in real life than <laughs> kill yeah. a couple words. Um, like, I may be thick, but my jokes are slim. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the Roseanne episode that I saw. That was the first time I saw you. It was is that was that what well, was that in Arizona? Was it? No, the Arizona one was four years ago, and okay. then maybe like after being here for three months, I got on. And Ty Rivera, who's a brilliant comedian, um, he was the guest on that one, and he talks to me, which is always like flattering. I know I know the shit out of him too. <laughs> <laughs> So is that is that a thing like the the guests will they you know if they liked your minute or they liked your interview or whatever and they I mean do they reach out or they give you do you guys exchange contact and just kind of they're there as like a mentor um sort of like I've seen it happen before not a crazy amount like and I always get excited when somebody gets a golden ticket um I haven't seen any of the episodes when the regulars became regulars but when I was in L.A., I think I'm pretty sure William Montgomery wasn't a regular yet, but I met him and he just walked around with a backpack full of PBR and like he'd give me one every once in a while. <laughs> and I'm like, I like this dude. But like it was funny because I'm like, what are you, the beer fairy? And I think he thought I was calling him a faggot. Oh, no. Like he looked at me for a second. I'm like, because you're here giving beer out to people like a fairy godmother. And he's like, oh, he's like. Yeah, <laughs> and then he went into my fuck yeah. <laughs> he he definitely read the book uh, how to influence people and win them over because he's <laughs> if you have a backpack full of beer you're gonna gain some friends. Yeah, like I had a backpack. I think it was more for personal reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if he still drinks. Yeah, I don't. Huh. I, I had seen on one of the episodes he was saying how he. Uh, I think it was Tony that was saying that he was he was sober now. But uh, okay. I don't know. I follow the uh, that Facebook group, um, the Kill Tony one. That's I, I, I honestly, I'm like a newish fan of the show. Um, yeah. Pro, I, I always saw reels and TikToks and things, and I was like, oh, that's funny, you know. And I just happened to come across um, an episode on. It came up on my YouTube. I don't know, maybe five six months ago, and. I've just been hooked ever since and trying to watch the old episodes. But when you have 10 years of material, it's tough to get through it all. Oh, and then, like, I do love that group, and it's cool because I'm a moderator of it now. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's funny because, like, there's, a, well, there's like, quite a few people in there who don't like me, and I like them, like, the <laughs> real ones. Yeah. Like, it's all like, I don't like you. You should quit comedy. Get a desk job. It's like, you're fat. Quit eating cheeseburgers. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. It's like, I'm not going to stop eating cheeseburgers. I love anything that has been around long enough that folks will become so obsessed with it that they think they know better than the, the folks who actually create the thing they love. Yeah, And well, this is exactly one, it. The thing that cracks me up the most is like, because they'll bitch when people repeat a joke. It's like, he repeated a joke, he repeated a joke. Yep. Then you'll see 12 different posts in three days. It's all like, hey. This what do you think? Who do you think won, Rick Diaz or Hans? <laughs> and I'm like, we don't have to ask this question 20 times a week. Yep. Get mad at Cam for repeating shit. It's like, but you're over here saying the same fucking thing over and over again. Just enjoy the show. Like, can't, why can't we just enjoy the content? It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but like, no, it's cool that they're that involved and that they love the show that much. Like, but also like. I'm really into stuff, but like I'm not sitting there. It's all like, oh, it's all like this isn't what it used to be. It's like you can't just be happy. Yeah, it's like they're still making content. What? So it's, what? What made you want to be a moderator? Um, I didn't. They just like invited me to be one, and I'm like, okay. 
Because I was always like, because I like reading the comments and stuff. Oh, okay. So you're just you're an active user. And they're like, oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah, I think uh, David Lucas and Hans Kim are moderators too, but I don't know if they like actually like look and. Yeah. Still, I imagine they're both very busy and have better shit to do. Yeah, I'd imagine they've got a lot going on. Yeah, but like I have shit I need to do, but I love to procrastinate. It's like, I'm going to clean my room, but let's find out this hot take on <laughs> William Montgomery today. <laughs> so you mean, so you're, you're, you're in an interesting spot cause you're a, you know, in a, in a sense, you're a character in that world and you also big fan of that world and obsessed as well, you know, following, you know, all the trends and all, all the, all the gossip, you know, on the, on the message boards and now a moderator. I mean, what's that like? Cause you I mean, you've got quite the following as well. Yeah, and it's weird. Well, I am grateful, but like, if I'm being honest, Legion of Skanks is my favorite podcast. <laughs> and like, I love, there's a lot of podcasts that I love, but I am like 10, 15 episodes behind in all the podcasts I watch, including Kill Tony. Yeah. Like, if one of my friends gets on, I'll be like, just tell me the timestamp and I'll watch their part. That's the way but, to like, do it. Yeah. But I am going to go back and start like, watching all the episodes um well you're hitting the road like, soon I, do you think you find time to you know to catch up on some of your favorite shows while you're on the road um yeah at some point the other thing is i like to fall asleep and while i'm writing i like background sound but if it's something new i haven't seen already so the podcasts it's all like i'm gonna get distracted and not actually write oh okay so I rewatch a lot of shit like the same shit like South Park, King of the Hill, Simpsons, like my favorite sitcoms or movies. <laughs> Just have Con Air in the background on repeat. <laughs> uh, for me, it was Curb Your Enthusiasm last night. I had uh, oh, I that too. a first episode or first couple episodes of uh, season seven. That um, <laughs> that's what I fell asleep to last night. <laughs> nice. Like my friend Shelby, she loves Curb Your Enthusiasm, and I love that. Um, I'm not a huge Seinfeld person, yeah. but like a couple of my friends are huge Seinfeld people and like good post Seinfeld memes. They're part of Seinfeld like fan groups. They go to Seinfeld trivia <laughs> and like, I love my friends. So it's all like, God damn it. So I'm like, whenever, <laughs> like when I'm with them and they're like, let's watch Seinfeld. And I'm like, that's how I know you love you guys. <laughs> you walk in, so you're like, what's the deal with this trivia show? wanted to talk about your your upcoming shows it's it looks like you're gonna be spending time like in the phoenix area which is is that near home base for you um yeah phoenix is about a two hour drive from my hometown flagstaff arizona but also phoenix was my home base for the last six years awesome. it was my first year i did in flagstaff and i thought i was good at comedy so i moved to phoenix and then <laughs> i still thought i was good at it so i moved to austin well, there is you are good at there. it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but, like, it's funny because, like, I've, like, been homeless for this shit. And, well, I was homeless before I started doing comedy, too, but that was more of my mom's fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't take the blame for that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of them was my fault, like, while well, I was still living with my mom, but that's because her boyfriend kept pissing me off, so I reported him for smoking weed in the house. Because he didn't have a lease, and then we lost our apartment because of it. Oh, no. And it's like, we're homeless again, and my mom's like, are you happy? And I'm like, yeah, because Brian's homeless again. <laughs> I'm like, worth it. I'd do it again. Next time I'll set the whole fucking place on fire with all of us in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have goals. You can tell I'm mentally stable. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing well. <laughs> yeah. This is you... Um midst of starting a sober stretch <laughs> but not quite yet <laughs> oh no like the longer i'm sober like well one i guess i get this like thousand like i'll just be thinking and it'll be something like i could be thinking of cartoons and people will come up it's like Celia, are you okay you have this thousand like you have this like face that veterans get when they're back in the war <laughs> and it's all like yeah i was just thinking about the simpsons god damn <laughs> yeah you, it's okay to zone out from time to time it's no big deal yeah, but I guess I get, like, real intense looks on my face. Um, 
But yeah, so Phoenix I'm excited for because I get to go with David Jolly. Yeah. And uh, Ali Musa. Like, David Jolly's more no- more of a fixture in the Kill Tony world. Ali, he's been on a couple times. But like, they've both gotten like big joke books and done Secret Chef. Well, fucking David was a guest on it. Absolutely. So what what prompted this, uh, this stretch through Arizona with them? Uh, David asked me if I wanted to do a show in Phoenix and I'm like, okay, I got to figure out if I can afford the tickets. Cause that's like always the thing. Yeah. It's all like, cause I want to start making money off of comedy and it's all like, okay, I'm going to go do the show in Phoenix, Arizona for $75. You know, it's $300 round trip for the plane tickets. It's going to be this, this and this, but, um, David's taking me with him and he's, and then, like, he asked Ollie, too, and then they added another show in Bisbee. And it's like, okay, so we're going to do it here and here. And they're like, hey, we added Flagstaff. And then David is like, that's your hometown, so you can headline that one. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to be doing Phoenix again, because Tempe is basically Phoenix. Okay. Um. So we're going to be there for four days. And I'm like... Well, like when I first met David, like he came up to me, he's all like, "You fucked up. You talk about fucked up shit. Like <laughs> if you could make people laugh, are you trying to kill yourself?" He's all like, "We're all making moves. We're all going up." And like a lot of people talk a big game, but David Jolly's one of the people that's all like, "If I get up before, I'm gonna help you." It's like vice versa, and I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" Because he- like. He seems really him. smart, like a really smart business guy. I mean, his jokes are smart, but like he just seems like he's on everything. He does. It's like uh, I don't know if you watched the cartoon Inside Job. Oh, I've seen it before. Um, the scientist who like develops and makes everything, but he's always on like twenty different drugs. Yeah, <laughs> that's what David. Jolly that's reminds. David Jolly. <laughs> And, like, watching your sets, like, some days, like, the first couple times I saw him, like, he was working at new shit, and it's not fair to judge a comic at an open mic. Yeah. And so many people do that. It's all like, oh, it's like, this dude sucks. It's all like, or he was working on new material. The thing that cracks me up, too, is the comics who talk shit, because, like, pretty much here it's, like, everyone's supportive, everyone's helpful. Yes. Or... Like, at the very least, they'll go outside and talk during your set instead of just being in there talking. Kind of like a David that, Jolly's, you know, mentality of, hey, if I make it, I'm pulling you with me, or you make it, let's go. Like, that that's the way it should be. Whoever gets out first, you know, let's go. Yeah, and I've been blessed because, like, I do meet a lot of people like that. Like, my friend Hector Garcia, like, he's gotten me opportunities, too, and, like, other comics in the scene. It's all like, hey, I know you're funny at this. It's all like, one dude, his uncle is Joey Medina, who's like one of the original Latin kings of comedy. Yeah. So I got to open for him and Paul Rodriguez one time, and then I've gotten to open up for Chingo Bling, uh, Valente Rodriguez, who's Ernie from, who plays Ernie on the George Lopez show. Hmm. That's awesome. And then Roseanne and Tony, but like getting these like opportunities, and I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. And then like trying to run with it. There are some hateful people, and there's, like, a lot of bitter people. The one person who's been doing it for 10 years in the scene, it's all like, the scene's a lot different from when I did it. Oh, My day, you could call an N-word an N-word. Uh, and then they're sitting there wondering why they don't get booked. And I'm like, yeah. oh. It's... But they'll, like, shit on anybody new, or they'll be like, I don't like this. This is how you should behave. Or they're like, this, this, this. He shouldn't wear shorts. He shouldn't do this. And I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. It's their time. They can do whatever they want. Yeah, let them be them. And it's it's the jealousy. <laughs> it just reeks <laughs> off of them whenever they're, they're speaking like that. No, but it is funny because there'll be like two people who like are both are known to suck <laughs> and like haven't written a good set in three years and they're talking shit about other people who suck and it's all like, well, you would know. Yeah, oh, that's but, great. <laughs> No, I saw, like, there was almost a bum fight because a lot of the people who move here, like, they'll quit their jobs or they'll come here with their savings. And then, like, you go through it fast, especially because you're trying to mingle and be social. Yep. It's very easy to, like, come here with $3,000 and spend it at the bars and on food trucks and then be on the street, like, setting up to, like, hey, it's all, like, I still haven't found a job yet. Like, it's really easy to become homeless and there are a lot of open micers in the scene who are homeless 
But it seems like they're they're living out of their cars and they're um yeah, the just, lucky ones are living out of their cars. Some of these dudes are straight up just like sleeping on a hammock, like somewhere in downtown or under an overpass. How do they feel they're gonna make it in just a matter of days or weeks or even months when it takes? I mean, it's it takes years. It does take years, and like also, I'll admit I was one of those people, but like I knew it would take years, but like I thought like. Well, the longer I did it, like, the longer I'm like, yeah, no, this is going to be a thing. And I, like, start hearing, like, because Gabriel Iglesias talks about it. He's all like, oh, he's all like, I blew up overnight. That's not what happened. He had been doing that shit for 10 years. And, right. like, the same with Matt Ray and Tony Hinchcliffe. Yep. Like, six years of just, like, them grinding and doing all this shit. That's why like, whenever he finds somebody that's 20 years old and he's like, oh, great, you're in it young, you, you've you you've gained time. And that makes me happy, too, like when these younger guys are like starting off because Dave Chappelle, I think, started when he was 14. Yeah. And like there's this one kid from my St. Aldo Compania. He runs a really cool show called Comedy Hangman with another comic friend of ours, Mason Spina. But Aldo, he went to the Unrupt Festival and now he has an agent. Oh, and wow. he's like 19 years old, and he started when he was 16. Uh, Tristan Bowling, he's another golden ticket winner. He started, I think, when he was 15, 16. Wow. And like, I'm jealous because I didn't start till I was like 26, 27. So, what are, but, you don't produce or like host any shows, do you? Uh, no, I've thought about it, but my thing is like, if I'm going to do something, I want to do it well. And if I produce a show and do all this stuff, I'm going to have to be sober the whole show. All right. And like, I get anal retentive. <laughs> And it's all like, I said, be here at 645, motherfucker. Yeah. And then like four comics would be like, oh, has the show started yet? I'm running late. It's like, how late? It's like, I stopped to watch the fight. It's like, you know, you're the first comic on the lineup, right? Yep. It's about being professional. Like, I get on edge sometimes. Like, I'm one of those people who would rather be at a place early. Like, if it's an open mic, I don't care. It's like, I'll get there late. It's like, I'll sign up last. I'll hang out and write. Or drink, but if it's like a book show, it's like I want to get there early so I can think about what I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. It's like I'll maybe have a drink or two at most, but I won't drink until after my set, especially if it's a paid show. Are you someone that does like to take the edge off and have a drink at a show? I just like to have a drink in general. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> uh, um, I wouldn't say it's taking the edge. Well, maybe it's taking the edge off. I'm not sure, but like one beer, like. Kind of just like loosens you up, yeah. Or like one shot, it's like, all right, cool. It's like, let's do this. Let's fucking go. Do you get pretty anxious, or you've done this enough now after eight years that it's just kind of like, all right, I'm ready to go to work. Um, I'm surprised it didn't happen at Celebrity Theater. Like, I was anxious and like nervous the whole time, but I uh, stress vomit. <laughs> And uh, pretty much every time I've been on Kill Tony, right after I'm done with the interview and everything, I go to Shakespeare's or, well, now they sign, we sign up at Poor Choices. Yeah. But, like, I'll go to the bathroom and just, like, throw up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm so glad this didn't happen on stage. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm the opposite. I, I will fill a toilet um, with shit every single time, and it's just from nerves, 100% from nerves. I've noticed that too because I'll like be waiting for my turn and waiting and waiting and then like I won't have to like shit all day and then it's like sell you you're next and I'm like cool and then I go to pee and then it start pooping I'm like god damn it <laughs> it's happening <laughs> oh that's great so 2024 I mean you got you know the Arizona run uh with David Jolly I mean what what is what are your plans like what are you thinking uh I saw you made a post that you'd like to hit more states I mean what kind of is on your agenda so I am excited, and I am going to be back in Arizona in April as well. Um, but I'm going to, March 2nd, I'll be in uh, Baton Rouge. And then March 4th, I will be in New Orleans. And then, like, I forget the name of the Baton Rouge venue, and then they're finding the venue for the March 4th show. And once I have that, I'll post about it. I've been hitting up people in Denver because, like, I posted on, like, my YouTube and everywhere because I'm trying to set up shows based where people are interested to come see me. So people are like, hey, she has people who want to see her. We can give her time. Oh. And that makes it a lot easier than just showing up. It's like, I've done comedy for seven years. Pay me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's time. And you have, you've, got yeah. a, you've got a following and your, your material is fantastic. 
it's dark, but it's fantastic. <laughs> so I've got that. Um, even if I don't get on, I plan at being plan to be at Skankfest, especially because this one falls on my birthday, and that's gonna be in Vegas again this year. I still gotta submit to that. Um, shit, where else was I supposed to go? There's this guy who wants me to do some shows and uh. I know it's Nevada, California, Arizona, and I forget the other one he said. But that's in the works for us to do. And then I'm trying to set up a show in Ohio because that's where my best friend lives right now. Oh, fun. It's going to be a busy so, year. It's going to be a big year. Yeah, I'm trying. Like, because I want to see, like, I spent most of my life in the Southwest. I got to see New York for the first time. I'm like, this is so cool. This is a lot of pollution. It's so cool. Did that pizza just carry a child? Did that rat just carry a child (laughs) with? Like, New York was cool. But, like, I wanted to look at the skyscrapers, but everybody's like, don't do that. You'll get mugged. Oh, dang. So, yeah. So, like, I got to enjoy parts of New York, but I don't. Like, I was worried about getting mugged, and I'm like, this is all my shit. What time of year was it? Uh, I was there in November 5th, I believe. Oh, man. Or... I've always wanted to be there around Christmas. Yeah, it was cool. I was sad that it didn't snow. And then I go there, and I was expecting it to be cold. And I'm like, thank God, because we were still getting out of the heat from Austin. Because it was still, like, hot in November. And I'm like, I hate the heat. But then we had a freeze, and Poor Choices was freezing. Like, it was cold as shit in there. <laughs> It was, like, so cold, like, my nipples were, like, glass cutters, and I was going to go up to, like, Colton, the guy who runs and tells us who's up next. It's, like, just take my name out of the bucket, dude. I'm going to go home and make a pork chop and put it under my tit. <laughs> do, do the roads get slick there for when it does get a freeze? Um, From what I'm told, yeah. Like, I've seen some, like, ice on the road, and luckily it didn't rain, so it wasn't that bad. But everybody says when, because a lot of comics will, like, make the drive from Dallas, which I think is about three, four hours away. Yeah. But every Monday they'll make the drive and people from San Antonio, it's like an hour and a half away. So a lot of people from a lot of different parts of Texas will just make the drive every Monday to sign up for their chance on Hill County. I'm just so used to when it gets cold and it's icy or it snows. I mean, we have trucks that will go out and they'll plow it and they'll put the sand down and the salt down and everybody can still function. Yeah. But then there's parts of the country where it'll, we'll have a freeze for a night, you know, like some parts of Texas and there's not really a lot yeah, of, it's like it's the end of day shit. yeah, <laughs> I always find that very interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm from, Flagstaff, Arizona, and we get all four seasons because we're on a mountain. Oh, okay. So we get major snowstorms, so we get the plow trucks and the gravel, the cinders thrown on and the salt and all that. Flagstaff, Arizona, it's been probably, I don't know, over 20 years, but I was on the air there. I did a radio show there on the weekends, but I was broadcasting from Omaha, (laughs) but I had to act like I was in Flagstaff. Wait, you're broadcasting from where? I was brad- broadcasting from Omaha, Nebraska, but I was acting okay. as if I was in Flagstaff, Arizona. I was on their station. Oh, damn. I forget what the station was, but I think it was Alternative Rock. But I, yeah, it, it was uh, it was a sweet gig. I was in like 10 cities, but I was just right here in Omaha. <laughs> and everyone thought I was there. It was fun. Yeah, the weather's similar enough. Well, awesome. Well, I, hey, thank you for coming on and uh, taking a bit of your time out of your day. And I, I thought your, your podcast was fun. I, I very much enjoyed the conversations and... Uh, the chatter with your friends, yeah. the, your camaraderie and your um, chemistry with those guys. You can tell you guys are good friends and you, you've you got a lot of stories to tell. Yeah, I, I do have a lot of stories and I love Scott, but like the birthday boy guys, again, Eric Biggs and JP Boo, like I think out of all the podcasts I've done here in Austin, theirs is the one I always have the most fun on. Like they laugh easy. They're easy to talk to. Um, but like when JP asked, he was all nervous and shit. I'm like, I would love to do yeah. it with you guys. <laughs> Why not? Like, I'd absolutely love it. Oh, I, I love how, uh, they would start talking about something and then, and then you would come up with a story that was just off the wall, like had really nothing to do with what they were saying and just took it in a different direction. I was like, this is great. Cause then, then they would instantly make, Oh yeah, this is where we're going. And, um, be able to make tags on it. No, it was, I, it was very I much fun. It was fun. It. I can't wait for uh, for the next episode. It should be fun. And the next episode is going to have Rebecca Trent, who is the owner of Creek in the Cave and part owner of Skank Fest. Oh. So I'm really excited. Very nice. It's going to be a good episode. March 1st, it'll be available on YouTube.
Thank you so much, Cecilia, for taking time to join us here on Laugh With Me. My name's Jeremy Odom. You can see me live stand-up comedy at Marty's Tap in Sioux City, Iowa. This is on Friday, March 8th. And you can also hear me every single Wednesday for a brand new episode of Laugh With Me. You can find it on Spotify. You can find it on Apple Podcasts. You're listening to it right now somewhere, right? So wherever you found it this time, that's where you're going to find it again next time. And then hopefully, very soon, you can find it in many other places. Same show, different place to listen to it. And you know what? Honestly, I think it gets better and better every time you listen to it, especially if on different platforms. So I recommend it. In fact, Johnny, I don't know if you know this, but 9 out of 10 doctors recommend you listening to it on all platforms it's available on. Like all shows that you watch, um, that they recommend that. So I don't know. That's just something I've heard. I have no... I don't know, no facts to it, other than that's what I heard, okay? And if doctor is involved in it, then you know it's got to be true, right? It's got to be true. Johnny, don't play me off. <laughs> that's, see, this is what he does. He starts to not believe the things I'm saying, and he thinks he can just play the music, and then the show's going to end, and then that's, that's his way of shutting me up. Well, it just doesn't work like that, Johnny. It just doesn't.